and thank you for joining me. Today, we are going to talk about the CMMI Performance Report, a relatively new artifact for CMMI that is completed as part of the CMMI appraisal process. While it may take some time to get used to, we promise it can bring significant value. Not only is it a useful tool for the appraisal team, it can also provide insights into how the adoption of CMMI is helping an organization. Given how many appraisals are performed each year, analyzing accumulated data can provide a window into how CMMI is being used by all the different organizations that have adopted CMMI and the benefits those organizations are getting as a result. So, what is in the performance report and how does one complete it? I'm glad you asked. Let's start by looking at the format of the report. You will find a template for the performance report in the MDD Toolkit for Appraisal Planning and Conduct. While it is useful to use the template while you are instructing appraisal teams and providing organizations early visibility of a report, please make sure you use the template obtained from within the CMMI appraisal system itself when providing an actual report. Also found in the MDD Toolkit is something called the Practical Guide to the Performance Report, which provides basic guidance on completion of this report. I'll reference this document so you may want to download and refer to it as you listen. The Performance Report has five sections, Business Objectives, Measurements, Improvement Actions and Benefits, Model Mapping, and Appraisal Team Comments. That's a lot. So let's talk about each section in more detail. The Business Objectives section explains why the appraised organization is using CMMI and what the organization is trying to achieve. There are so many organizations and each has a different structure, group of people, and perhaps use of different languages. While the CMMI model can work for everyone, how it makes sense for each organization to use the model is dependent on the specific needs an organization has. The business objectives are used to communicate the imperatives within an organization. Things like what the leadership of the organization has set as its direction and what is perceived as being important to their customers. As such, it makes sense to start here. The first column in this section of the report is used to identify the business objective, which is usually a high-level description of the objective. The second column is a detailed statement of the objective which may be how the organization defines the objective. For example, let's say the first column identifies the objective as improving on-time delivery. The second column might expand on this by saying, achieve 90% of scheduled milestone dates on commercial projects in the next 12 months. This is where the appraisal team leader starts to understand how mature the organization is. Remember, Setting SMART objectives can make it easier for organizations to develop well-defined measures that will ultimately fulfill the managing performance and measurement practice area. Having poorly defined objectives at this stage may indicate problems later. The third column is called type of work and relates to the work being done within the organization to which this objective applies. If different types of work are being done, the details would be spelled out here. The type of work is useful when accumulated over multiple appraisals, as grouping data related to similar types of work can be a helpful way to portray the bigger picture. The fourth column is called additional comments and is where the intention of the objective is explained. This may include the priority of the objective and or history of how the objective has developed. The fifth and final column is called Related Measurement and Performance Objective. Very often, objectives are tiered. For example, an organization may have a high-level objective to improve its average customer satisfaction score, but there may be one or more related performance objectives. In this column, both business objectives should be stated but the focus should be on the performance objective. In some instances, it may be helpful to examine the business objective and the performance objective as separate items. If so, use this column to indicate which objectives are related to each other and how. Measurements. The next section deals with describing the specific measures an organization uses to track its achievement of the business and performance objectives. 
The first column in this section identifies the specific key performance indicator that is used. Of note, organizations with high maturity may use the quality and process performance objective. This column specifies the details and the target results of the measure. The second column in this section is used to identify achieved results. Whenever possible, these two columns should indicate two things. First, what the results were prior to any process improvement, and second, what the results were following the process improvement activities. We realize this may not be possible for every objective, but it is reasonable to expect an organization that has been working with the CMMI model for some time will have noticed some differences in measurable outcomes. The third column relates to the frequency with which this particular measurement is collected and analyzed. The fourth column may seem like a simple yes or no regarding whether or not the performance objective has been met. But be careful, as this is where it's important to specify the objective and related measures taken by the organization. Make sure you compare results against the appropriate time period. If the reporting frequency is monthly, but the objective was an annual one, consider how a few instances of poor results might reflect on overall achievement of the objective. Consistent results may be necessary to claim an objective has been effectively achieved. More mature organizations should already be clearly identifying results. If you cannot determine if an objective has been achieved, that may indicate a weakness in the measurement process and implementation. It may also reveal if senior management is addressing certain items in the governance practice area. The last two columns in the measurement section are required only for appraisals of highly mature organizations and are used to specify process performance baselines and models used by that organization. Improvement Actions and Benefits The third section of the report is called Improvement Actions and Benefits and shows what the organization has done to achieve results. The first column in this section identifies actions that were implemented to improve the performance objective. Here, you should again check for consistency, as inconsistent actions and objectives may be indicative of necessary findings in the appraisal results. Not every improvement action needs to be listed. The second column is called Potential Root Cause and is where observation results are logged. If an objective was achieved, what deficiency or problem was overcome? Why were some objectives not met? Details may be provided by the organization when they initially complete the template, or they may be gleaned from evidence within the appraisal. The third column in this section outlines the business-related benefits the organization has achieved from the improvement actions they've taken, including results they have reported. While it's reasonable to expect an organization will have achieved something from the actions it has taken, there are often additional benefits that were not expected by the organization. Capturing all the related benefits can provide incentives to other organizations who are deciding how to improve their processes. The last column in this section helps determine whether the benefits are sustainable. If the organization has taken specific actions to ensure their improvements are persistent and habitual, this is where those actions are described. If an organization has not yet taken specific actions, this is an opportunity for the appraisal team to provide useful feedback on specific things the organization can do. Model mapping and appraisal team comments. The last two sections of the performance report contain two individual columns. The model mapping column lists the individual practice areas or whole practice areas related to the achievement of the business objective of the organization. If weaknesses exist in areas related to achieving an objective, the organization's business or performance results may reflect this. The final column is where the appraisal team can provide analysis and is an important way the performance report can provide even greater value to the organization. The performance report starts to evolve from the moment the appraisal team leader makes contact with the organization and does not finish until the appraisal is complete. An organization should be able to provide information for the business objective section and the measurement section. The improvement actions and benefits section may be initiated prior to examining the objective evidence, but 
the picture will definitely need to be enhanced via the artifacts and affirmations gained during the appraisal. When used as recommended, the performance report can inform the development of the appraisal results and ensure the results are consistent and valuable to the organization. The information gained from examining all the reports across all the appraisals provides the most valuable picture that helps keep CMMI relevant. In the end, the performance report will help convince many organizations of what we already know. CMMI is the tool to help an organization achieve success.